Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm a teacher and author, and this is English Nerd. So today, I wanted to talk about how to write dark academia. Now, as with all writing, there are various ways to get to the same effect or various ways to write different genres. However, my book Laertes, which is a dark academia retelling of Hamlet set in the 1920s, is coming out in just a couple days from when this video drops on YouTube. And so I thought I would pass along some of the elements that I think are important to include if you are writing dark academia or just if you like the genre. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay. So first thing I want to say is that if you're going to write some dark academia, you ought to know the genre expectations. Every genre has expectations. Some of them are more stringent than others. Romance, for example, tends to be very, very stringent about what um, you can and cannot do. Fantasy, there's a little bit more wiggle room. But with dark academia, there are certain expectations. If you are saying this is a book in that goes along with that genre, your readers are going to anticipate things just like you do when you read this. So one of the main ones is setting. Setting goes beyond just the place where all the action happens. Um, it's also the, the mood and the atmosphere and the way you describe things, but I'll take the where first. So with Dark Academia, as Academia would suggest, the setting is pretty much always a school. So it's, uh, I don't know that I've ever seen an example that is not a high school, especially a boarding school, because there has to be this, this kind of bubble effect that happens where people are cut off from a lot of the elements of the outside world. And instead they have this shorthand with people around them, but more on that later. Um, so either a high school or a college. So if you think about something like If We Were Villains, that is a college that is very specifically about the performance of Shakespeare. In Laertes, although they don't spend 100% of their time in a college setting, the main characters are all studying in university and it is a big part of their identity at this point in their lives. And so the setting is very important. If you want to set a dark academia story in a zoo, could you do it? Maybe, but it would be it would be a tricky thing. The weather. Don't forget about the weather either. Part of the reason people read this genre at all is for a place to go, a place that feels um, mysterious but also kind of warm and an escape from the lives that maybe they're already living. So in my story, I spent some time really leaning into the the weather, the changing of the seasons. I really enjoyed writing some of the descriptions for October, for example, where it's rainy and sort of creepy and the sun goes down earlier. So think about the rain, think about the snow, think about especially those cozy academic feelings sorts of of weather patterns to incorporate into your writing. There's not one way to do it, just like I said, but it's something that can that can clue your reader into the location and the feel more quickly than a lot of other things can. Also consider when you're talking about the setting, the details that you point out. So in my book, Laertes, uh, Laertes, of course, and his friends live in this place. They called it the battlements. And I wanted to flesh this place out and make it like this, this family-like, academic, cozy setting. So it has books piled everywhere. It has this piano. It has these hothouse roses over by the paper where they write letters. There are little statues everywhere and sketches and fencing equipment. And it's just this chaos of dark academia stuff. There's a skull on the mantelpiece and whenever the guys enter, it's this, this tradition that they always touch the, the skull on their way in. And so think about those details. There is a lot more freedom in dark academia, I think, to spend some time with description, not to, not to pause and give 
necessarily pages and pages of what everything looks like, but people expect it a bit more in a book like that rather than something that is super fast paced and doesn't really have time to look around. This one, this genre, people expect to look around. So think about those details that you do want to pull out. And if you need some inspiration, you can always go on Pinterest or one of those other uh, platforms and look up ways that people have done dark academia decor. And that can give you a lot of, a lot of really good ideas. Um, the second thing I wanted to address is the characters. Obviously, characters drive a story, whether it's plot driven officially or not. The characters are what make people want to stick with your story. It's not only a place to go, but it's a place to care about. So with Dark Academia, traditionally you have a sort of found family among the students at the high school or at the university or the boarding school or whatever it is. And they, you think about Dead Poet Society, right? There's this, this group of people and, and they've found one another and they end up developing this kind of shorthand, this academic centered shorthand with one another that uh, born of shared experiences and shared studies. Now also traditionally with dark academia books, you have uh, a lot of white guys and a lot of um, kind of unfulfilled tension between uh, those people. So I've noticed that that more modern dark academia writers have moved away from that a bit. I know that Ace of Spades, for example, has main characters of color. And so I think that's a great direction or at least opening up the possibilities for what to do. So you don't have to have this, you know, all white cast with dark academia, but that is something that has been fairly traditional to do um, in the past. Now, this friend group has to have certain qualities to it to make it feel really solidly dark academia. And part of that is this, this sense of hedonism, of really soaking up studies and living this kind of free, almost bohemian lifestyle, um, bordering on criminal. So you think about the secret history or um, if we are villains again, and there is the sense that it's not necessarily a good way to live, but it's this this free space, uh, this particular place, this particular time, these particular people are having this really intense shared experience that is informed by, by um, hedonism and by this lack of traditional rules. There's also this fascination with academics outside of class. So you can sh you can have classroom scenes if you want. Um, that's pretty common. Dead Poet Society again. You have Robin Williams playing Mr. Keating and a lot of the scenes take place in his classroom as he's changing the lives of these of these boys. And that's a great way to go. My story does not have a lot of classroom scenes. However, the characters are obsessed in their own ways with different aspects of what they're studying. It's just part of their mental furniture. And so they're constantly making references to uh, Greek and Roman poets, or um, often what people will do is choose a, a topic and classics in the capital C sense, Greeks and Romans is a really common one to do. You think about Dead Poet Society, you have literature. If we're villains, it's Shakespeare very specifically. And, uh, but it doesn't have to be. You can have you can have dark academia with STEM as well, and the characters should, on their own, investigate these topics. They should be writing papers or thinking about these things or memorizing poems or really immersing themselves in whatever it is that they're studying, well beyond just what they have to do for schoolwork. That is really important to the whole vibe of dark academia, <clears throat> that you go down rabbit holes, that you um, do that. So if you have a modern setting for your dark academia book, then you're going down Wikipedia, but then you're 
following those links at the bottom and you're getting old copies of the original sources and you know you, you get the idea um, they're young these characters the the main ones and passionate just in general there's a lot of passion passion for academia passion for one another passion for um, the things that that they care about the lifestyle that they live is often something that people are willing to to protect at at uh, pretty high cost so that is generally what the what the characters are like of course within that you have a tremendous amount of freedom and honestly writing those kinds of characters was super fun it was it was a bit different than than what i've done in the past and so having this group of people who are all different who all focus on different things and have different personalities but all share this passion and these different sorts of pursuits um, was a blast then you have uh the i just put this under the heading elements because i wasn't really sure what to what to say besides that okay so first element that doesn't particularly fit into another category maybe setting yeah setting would be a moody dark tone doesn't mean that you can't have humor doesn't mean that you can't have lighter moments um you know the the guys throwing the football and saying to indeed be a god you know in dead poet society but there's this but there's this darkness to it that is both often physical but but more so this internal melancholy that informs the way that the scenes are written so you have this moody dark tone um a lot of times you have murder a lot of times there's a murder mystery element to it and i'm struggling to think of an exception i've read of course dark academia books but i haven't wed i haven't wed super widely in that in that category so i have a, I have a few books under my belt but i know that there are some gaps in my uh, dark academia reading as well so if you know of any book that does not include a murder that is pretty central um or, or at least a death that is pretty central then you know let me know but um yeah so there's often murder and then there are always secrets everybody does not say everything there's always the sense that you are in this tight-knit group but even within that group you have secrets from the outsiders and even within that group there are secrets that you can't quite crack so you think about a lesson in vengeance which recently came out uh victoria lee i think is the writer of that one that was an all-female dark academia which i thought was an interesting um approach and not one that's that's as common to see but that really highlights that idea of secrets and not being quite certain about what's real or what you can believe about the people around you so there's a dark and haunting sense that you don't know everything and perhaps that could even mean you're not sure who murdered someone and 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 that kind of thing and then finally the last category is the language typically in this dark academia genre you have the freedom to again not do a super fast-paced story it can still be really engaging and pull you along and i'm not saying that it's a slog by any means but you don't you're not constrained to some of the some of the expectations for other genres you know you think about middle grade adventure you have to go so fast you can't spend that much time on one thing with dark academia you can be more formal you can use a greater vocabulary you um, are often going to make allusions to great scientists or great writers or there's this understanding that the characters have where you don't need to explain all of those things so you have david and pythias in in laertes that comes up and the characters don't really need to explain to each other what that means. Um, it's just a, a old classic story that they have all studied and so they can all refer to. So you have allusions, elevated language, and that shorthand among 
the characters in if we are villains the characters speak to each other in shakespearean quotations because they're just so steeped in all of this and the writer uh, ml rio clues us into the fact that this is happening by italicizing the lines and often having the main character think about what play it's from or something like that but you can you can really let your own academic obsessions shine through with no judgment in in works like this so there are a lot of expectations but there are also some unusual freedoms that you get with writing in this style with this dark sort of um in this dark morally gray space but with the understanding of how beautiful the world can be through a uh, an academic lens, not necessarily a classroom lens, but those traditional subjects of English or language or what have you. So that is a bit about how to write Dark Academia. If you have not already pre-ordered your copy of Laertes, a Hamlet retelling, then definitely do so. It is in paperback, hardcover, and ebook, and it'll be available July 29th, 2022. So that is, that is it. Did I leave anything out? I felt like I left some things out. So put those down at the bottom. I would love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff because there's a lot more coming your way. All right.